Hello, and welcome to my channel on human design. When people come into human design, they're, they're looking for answers. A lot of them are looking for answers. And you know, human design isn't going to give you the answer. It's going to take you deeper into the mystery of what it is to be you in the life. When you think about it, there are 65% of people in the world, for example, that have an open will center. So that means 65% of people in the world at some level think they're worthless and they need to be worth more and they need to compete and they need to find a way to really be the best, you know, better than everybody else. Well, that's not going to work. You know, you can try, you can try. Some of them find ways to, to make money in this world somehow, but that's not enough. It's never going to be enough. Whenever you have a framework in your chart, you know what is fixed in you and what is not fixed in you, what is open in you. Where you're open, you can be wise or you can be terribly, terribly lost. Now, if you think that human design is going to give you a plan to live by, well, that's not going to work either. We each have our own way of making decisions to be correct according to who we are. That doesn't mean that you're going to have a life of happiness from then on. No, it's going to take you deeper into the mystery. It's going to take you to the cutting edge of what it is to be you by finding out many times about what you're not. And in that edge, you grow. And in that edge, you begin to wake up. And that is the whole point. My name is Richard Beaumont. I've been doing human design for 25 years. If you like this channel, uh, please do subscribe and share it so that I can keep doing more for you. Okay. When we look at the Open G Center, there are about 50 54% of people that have no fixed identity. Their issues are going to be about trying to hold on to love, trying to find their direction in life. I spend a lot of the readings that I do talking to people about direction, but I don't give them a direction. I look to see what's already in them that is part of being them. Let me give you an example. I was doing, uh, I went to a human design uh, a workshop that I was doing in France. And uh, as part of it, one of, the, one of the group wanted to do a theatrical performance with, a, with characters and scenes and, and themes. And in the middle of this, um, he needed to change costume. So he got one of his friends to hold up a, um, a cloth in front of him while he did a quick change behind her. She only had one channel, the 6447. Uh, so one channel, a mental projector. And I was amazed. She held this sheet up with this look in her eye, which she'd, she'd go, you know, she would be doing these expressions and these subtle movements, holding the interest of the audience while he did the quick change. It was astonishing to see. You know, she, you would say this is a channel of confusion and, and, and considering the past all the time. But I tell you, she held everybody's interest. It was fascinating how she did it. That quizzical look that she would give when she was doing it. I mean, she was a performance in and of herself. Do you think she planned that? No. It was just her being her, holding the attention with the open throat and the open G, to be present in there in as part of what was going on. Astonishing. This is not a system for finding a fixed truth. It is a living knowledge. And you find out by being involved in your life. It shows you where you're fixed and where you're not fixed. And people come to me and they go, well, you know, I'm a projector, but I don't know what to do in my life. Well, your life isn't about doing. It's about what other people are doing. It's about you guiding them in what they're doing. That's what it's about. What do you get called into? What are you invited into? What is what really moves you to get involved with life? 
And then, and then you find a more um, successful life. You find a life that suits you better. Not because you're trying to be someone you're not, but because you're actually doing what you're already capable of doing and do naturally. The open sacrals will take in the life force energy from the, uh, the 68 percent of people who are generators. They simply will. That's why they can see whether the energy is being used correctly or not. I mean, it makes me laugh. Uh, Ra once said, you know, generators, they're the dumbest creatures on Earth because he could feel when the generators responded. And the generators didn't notice when they responded. Where you're open is where you can be wise. It's also where you can be completely lost. If you're an open sacral and you go, well, what do I need? You know, I need more power. I need more energy. You know, give me a car with a lot of oomph. You know, I want to feel powerful. You know, give me a powerful horse I can ride and feel the power. Well, yes. You can, you can do that, that's absolutely fine. But if you try to be the powerhouse yourself, you know what happens. You get drained, you get exhausted. You know, life is a continual ah, exhaustion from one thing to another. I see it again and again in projectors. They get so tired because they're trying to be more powerful than they actually are. And the joke of it all is they can, they can reach to the very top. If you want to see, I mean, I'm not saying he was powerful, but if you want to see an example of that, look at our, our Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who has just um, been taken out of office. Yeah, he has the channel of awakening, nothing else. He's a, he's a projector with no motors. And there he is supposedly leading the country. So it's not about the power within. It's about you actually coming to terms with living the mystery of what you are. Um, when you have something fixed in your chart, for example, I have the 2946, the journey of discovery. I have the power to commit, to commit and to go into an experience, but I don't know where it's going. I don't have a plan of what's going to happen. The only thing that I know is that I am committed to this and I am going to go through it until it's over. Then I get to know what it was all about. Then I get to really understand what I've been through. But during it, it's an existential mystery. It's every moment moving into every other moment. If you've got a in emotional system. There is no logic in the emotion. You know, I don't expect emotional people to be sensible all the time. They can't be. There is no logic. It's not about reasons and it's not about excuses. It's about them feeling what they're feeling. The wisdom comes from not making a decision in the moment, but that doesn't mean that they're not dealing with all these kinds of waves of feeling in this way and that way. If you think about an ocean, have you ever seen the sea completely still with no movement? There is always going to be movement. It means they have emotional energy running through them if they have the emotional system. They're feeling and their feelings are changing, changes everywhere. They can feel happy about one thing one day and unhappy about it the next day. It isn't logical. It isn't about logic. It's about feeling everything that's going on for them. Their wisdom comes over time because of how much they can feel and the way that they feel. So yes, human design can uh, delineate who we are from one another, but that's not the solving of the mystery. The mystery is in the living of the life. If you have an open root system, you know, when you're younger, you're going to be chasing the excitement. Where's the adrenaline rush? Where's the excitement? Where's the vitality of life? But if you keep living in that way, you're going to burn out. You're going to burn out your adrenals. You know, that's not the way to live. But it is a way 
to find out what is true for you. There is a way through that openness to understand that you're not here to be in a hurry, that you're here to calm down, that you're here to gently go into the life and not chase the adrenaline rush. So it's very much about seeing the parameters in action. So we find ourselves by revelation over time, by seeing the parameters. It isn't solving the mystery of life, it's entering deeper into it. And that's where the magic comes. We are involved in an experiment of being ourselves. It isn't over until you have you draw your last breath until that moment comes you're in it so it can be yes it can be very helpful and yes in making decisions correctly for yourself you can move into a life that suits you far better than anything you could imagine far better than any copycat life you might try to imagine with your open will because it's going to fit you because that's who you are there's a constant movement. There's a constant opening up to who you are. There isn't just a formula that says, I am this and then everything's gonna be fine. We are involved in a living knowledge. We are involved in a living life. That is the mystery. That is the beauty. That is really what it's all about. Yeah, so. That's what I have to say. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like, subscribe and share it. And I will see you again very soon.